Hi guys, so I'm very lucky with this channel that quite often I get sent products ahead of their release dates and those lovely people over at Army Painter have just sent me this, the Wargamers paint set um, and as I always say, you can never have enough paints and this is part of their War Paints Fanatic set uh, and as you can see, yeah, tons of awesome paints and as well as this, um, this awesome looking dragon which I'm, well, I'm going to be painting in this video so I have used some of their Fanatic paints in, well, in a video some time ago um, and yeah, awesome coverage. These really do go on very well. Uh, as you can see, they work like the triad system, is it called? So yeah, variety of paints in the same sort of colour, just different shades of. Um, I say the triad set, I think it's actually six paints in each one. Uh, but yeah, go and check someone else out who knows more about what they're talking about the Fanatic set. As obviously, I am more of a uh, the speed painter. Uh, but yeah, got this little lovely dragon on sprues. It's been quite a while since I've done anything on a sprue. So that's going to be quite fun. But uh, yeah, paints, um, I love them. Um, and honestly, I do believe you can never have enough. And the other reason that I'm really excited to paint this dragon is because, well, Army Painter have set out a competition, a painting competition, uh, for those receiving this box set. So yeah, this is going to be officially my first, well, my first ever painted miniature for a competition. So yeah, super excited about that. And the great thing for me is you don't have to use the War Paints Fanatic set to do the uh, or enter this competition. You can use any of the Army Painter paints, which is pretty good because obviously I'm very used to using their speed paints. So that's kind of exactly what I'll be doing in this video. So it's been quite a while since I've painted a miniature that's come on a sprue. Um, obviously, as you can see here, yeah, pretty simple to do. Cut all the parts out, do a little bit of tidying up where the miniature was obviously attached to the sprue. So just a case of cutting a few bits off using the uh, the good old scalpel here to sort of scrape the bits clean and smooth um, and then yeah get everything ready to sort of assemble and glue together and some of you are aware I am currently in the process of moving and for the first time in four years well all the time I've had this channel I'm gonna actually have a room dedicated to this wonderful hobby and the great thing for me is it means I'll be able to get all the paints that I've currently got sitting in boxes in cupboards I'll be able to get every single paint I own out on display and well easy accessible to me and that's kind of the other reason why you're seeing some of the videos I use one brand and then in the next video I might use a different brand or this that and the other and generally it's because I do have paints in boxes or in bags in cupboards uh, so yeah it's about to have them all out at once is just great it does mean I will have to start making some more well some paint racks so yeah there could be a video of me making sort of paint racks to sort of fit well fit my needs and as you can see, yeah, gluing this thing together uh, didn't take too long. There wasn't too many parts. Obviously, instructions very simple and clear and easy to follow, which is pretty cool. Lots of lovely definition in this dragon as well, which is great because obviously that does gonna that is gonna help me when it comes to the speed painting. So this miniature does come with a base, but as you can see, it's quite a small base for a miniature that's got a bit of a big wingspan. So I hope this isn't cheating, but I'm gonna go make my own base for this. Um, good old printers, yeah, I love printers. So I've had my frozen printer printing some bits out, as you can see here. Um, just because I want the base to be a bit sturdier, a bit bigger. And because this is going to be like, obviously, a painted one for a competition, I thought I'd go for a bit of a fancier looking base. So yeah, using the good old frozen printers. <laughs> as you say, guys, I am currently in the middle of being in one place and another place. So I've got my frozen printers, all the resin, all set up. I just need to get everything connected get my desk in and well sort of move in really so this is a quick little tour of the uh, the workspace that I've got as you can see it's not a huge um, it is literally a spare room so when I say studio um, yeah well to me I'm excited it's a studio <laughs> even if it's a spare room it means I can have everything out all the time and yeah I've got more room to be a big kid in so I can't wait to show you this all when it when it's fully set up and usable so yeah I was using my frozen printers and obviously I had them printing in my flats before I sort of moved them just because well obviously I want to make these extra bits and the great thing with printers is yeah I printed out several of these columns because I wasn't too sure what kind of width I wanted I knew what height I wanted but not quite the width so yeah the good thing with fr frozen printers print out a variety of bits um, and then yeah there we go so that's a small base it came with and here's my bigger base obviously the bottom bit yeah it's gonna have some treasure because well dragons always guard in treasure so again printing out a few little bits put them on the base and then using some good old grout I love using grout 
Um, using this for the bottom, just sort of filling in any areas. This is going to have like little, uh, well, little gold coins put on, it, put on it at the end. Obviously, stick around. I'll show you what I used for that. Uh, but yeah, grout. I love using this just to fill in any areas, any holes. Um, so he's looking good. Uh, a little bit of a gap at the top of the miniature. Uh, this might just be me where I haven't pushed the sort of two pieces in fully. Uh, but either way, I uh, didn't like the little gap that was at the top because it's one of those things you can just about see it now. But when you come to paint things, it does sort of show off any well anything that's sort of wrong with the uh, with the miniature. So good old green stuff. Yeah, put that in, fill that, and yeah, there's no gap now in his head. And then off to the good bit of well, the fun bit of painting. So even though this is going to be for a competition, I am not going to change the way I paint or sort of stress out about anything. I say for the, me, this really is all about having fun. Um, so yeah, even though I, want to, I do want to start entering competitions, I'm not going to worry about them. I'm not going to stress about them. I'm not going to change how I feel and how I paint. I'm just going to continue having fun. Um, and if it wins, it wins. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. It's uh, well, it really will be the fun of taking part. And I say, I really don't expect to win anything. Um, but I'm just going to have fun painting. So, did the usual, primed in black initially. Uh, and then, again, I'm messing about trying out different things. So then I've sp sprayed him or painted him from above with the green. So this is literally all the way above, all the, all the way around. Um, and then I'm going to use the white. But this is just going to be, well, the Zenithal highlighting, just from one angle, 45 degrees up. Um, so, yes, yeah, so he's got a little bit of a combination of a white side the green side, and then obviously the black from underneath. So yeah, a bit of all sorts really. Again, this just helps when it comes to putting on the uh, the speed paints, just to give it some good variety in, well, how it's gonna look and affect the speed paints going over the top. So I've started with the base, put on uh, a black paint over that, and then a bit of dry brushing with some sort of copper color, as that'll just make the base look, well, hopefully a bit fancier. So I do have a rough idea of how, I want him to look at the end, um, in regards to like the paints I'm using. But with a lot of things I do, I kind of play it by ear as I go along. Because uh, quite often I'll change things, adapt things. Um, and yeah, again, I'm just having fun. So I'm not sort of, again, stressing out about this. I'm not sort of doing anything differently. I'm just painting how I would normally. Uh, but yeah, in my back of my mind, I'm excited that this is going to be sort of like entered into a competition. Um, as yeah, guys, that's something I want to do now. I know if you've seen my previous videos going back, well, probably even just a few months ago, I've always said that when I paint, um, I'm never going to win any competitions, so I'm never going to enter any. But now I'm of the opinion, well, I want to enter competitions, even if I know I'm not going to win them. It's just going to be fun to actually make a piece um, that, yeah, that is going to be sort of entered into something. Because it will make me sort of, well, mess about, try new techniques, try different things, and yeah, say, keep having fun with the thing, basically. So as you can see, yeah, I started painting all like the fleshy bits. Now I'm going around painting all the bits that I, well, I think that are going to be like bony bits. So that's these little bits protruding from the top. I'll probably do his uh, his fingernails in this and these kind of claw bits as well. And initially it was tough for me to choose a colour to do for the actual dragon itself. As well, dragons are all kinds of colours. So then I kind of opted for, well, just my favourite colour. So a good old orange even though the paint is called Zealot Yellow. Uh, but as always, yeah, whenever I get new paints, I paint the lids, just so you can see exactly how the colors are gonna come out. So Zealot Yellow, yeah, it's definitely got more of an orange tinge to it, um, but certainly a color I, yeah, I definitely love. So guys, don't forget to keep an eye out for how other people have painted their dragons, um, and look up the, yeah, the hashtag Wargamer Games, as yet yeah, you'll be able to see lots of people painting dragons, and I'm guessing in a whole variety of ways. So something I have been doing quite a lot recently, and that's putting a wash over the speed paints. Um, I'm, so far I've been lucky, none of them have reacted in any kind of way. Um, uh, but I just love how this works and how this looks, especially for sort of skin tones as well. Whenever I painted in the past, skins have always looked very, well, very the same color, very sort of monotoned, just like the peachy skin or whatever. Uh, but using speed paints obviously helps get a little bit of a differentiation in some highlights and some shadows. Uh, but then I find putting a wash over the top as well really gives the skin well that extra little bit of pizzazz or whatever the term might be. Um, and yeah, I just love it. So yeah, you'll be seeing me using washes quite a lot more now um, over the top of speed paints. 
So as you can see, yeah, I love how it looks. Um, it's definitely giving it sort of darker areas, definitely giving it a bit more character. Um, and just, yeah, just makes the skin and everything else look, well, I would say realistic. Um, but yeah, definitely a better way of painting. Again, guys, this is all where beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. For me, I love this sort of look and how things come out. Um, this isn't going to be everyone's tastes because, well, we are all different, especially when it comes to painting. Yeah, we've all definitely got our own preferences um, and preferred looks of things. So, yeah, guys, paint how you want to paint. Don't paint how you want, well, other people or how people you, you expect to paint. Does that make sense? Doesn't it in my head? Um, again, this is why having fun. Paint your way, I think is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> paint your way, have fun. Don't compare yourself to other people. Um, even though this is going to go into a competition, so this is going to be compared to other people. But in my eyes, I'm painting just for me. Uh, and I'm having fun with it. And I certainly had fun with this dragon. Especially, as I say, printing these bits out with the Frozen Printer. Um, yeah, I love this look so much more than on the base that he originally came from. Especially, as I say, the, the original base, uh, very small. Uh, so he would tip over really easy. Whereas on this base, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a base befitting for a dragon that's uh, looking after his hoard of gold. Anyway, enough waffling. <laughs> Let's get back to what I'm actually doing. Even though, again, I always think it's weird me saying what I'm doing because, well, funny enough, uh, you can see what I'm doing. So, yeah, trying out sort of different things. Making his, uh, his talons, not talons, uh, claws and bits and pieces. So, putting on some sort of whites there. Uh, but then trying to, like, feather it in. in. So I put a, a dollop on, um, then wet the brush, just to sort of, yeah, feather it all in, really. And then good old dry brushing. Yeah, I, lo I love this technique. Always love this technique. So dry brushing, washes, speed paints. Uh, yeah, can't go wrong, really. So that's him pretty much done now. And yeah, I love how he's come out. So now it's just time to add a bit of, uh, bit of glittering loot at the bottom. Uh, and I am quite literally using glittering loot. So, yeah, good old bit of PVA glue there, just for it to stick to. doesn't need to obviously dry that quick. Plus, the great thing with the PVA glue, it dries nice and clear. So, yeah, you won't see any of that. Um, and, yeah, just this cheap sort of, uh, well, glitter, really. But, obviously, it's in the shape of nice little circles. So, when it does eventually come out, um, yeah, it's going to look like loads and loads of gold. And, say, this does glitter really, really well. So, when the lights hit it, um, yeah, it reflects and looks just awesome. So there we go. I certainly had fun with this. Um, say, it's not really going to win any competitions, but I've certainly had a lot of fun. And I'm very pleased with how he looks. Um, and as they say, yeah, you've got to be in it to uh, to win it. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely love it. I say, yeah, gorgeous looking dragon. Um, so yeah, definitely go and check out the links down below, guys, to uh, get yourselves your hands on this Wargamer Fanatic set. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see how well everyone else has approached this and painted it. I say there's a fair chance most of them will use the actual Wargamer Fanatic range paints. Uh, but yeah, for me, speed paints are always the best way to go. And then if I need to, I can do any little extra areas with, uh, with obviously the normal kind of paints. So all I have to do now is take him off the, uh, the painting handle um, and then do a little bit of videoing of him, well, in all his glory. Hope you enjoy it, guys. And there we go, my first ever painted miniature for a competition. So yeah, don't forget to check out hashtag Wargamer Games. And many thanks to those awesome people over at Army Painter for sending me their Warpaint Fanatic range, which I will eventually get around to using uh, whenever I can stop using their speed paints. Because obviously I, well, I absolutely adore them and love them. So guys, don't forget to also check out the Frozen links down below. Um, as an awesome printer, get some awesome stuff from it. And yeah, you'll soon see it doing some time-lapse videos of me actually printing some larger items as well. So keep an eye out for, uh, for all that great stuff. Okay, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave comments, all that awesome stuff. 
Um, and yeah, I've entered my first competition. Awesome. <laughs> okay, guys, you'll take care. See you in the next one. Bye for now.